all of this research was fantastic and uh, very interesting and unique. And speaking of unique research, we have such a special opportunity here because we have the very first professor of skateboarding business, media, and culture in the entire country. He conducts research and lectures here at the Annenberg School, and he's research director for the U.S. Annenberg Institute for Sports, Media, and Society. Please join me in welcoming uh, Neftali Williams. I'm in keeping with the one, thank you for uh, having our class here, and in keeping with the structure of our class, we're gonna have one of our students present our guest, Vanessa, who will be back in here in two seconds. Uh, by a quick show of hands, how many of you have Ridden, ridden a skateboard before? Okay, so a few people. And how many of you are student athletes? Okay, and then how many of you can name a professional skateboarder? Okay, uh, besides people who aren't in my class. So, uh, are you okay, go ahead, you have your hat on? You, yeah, that's you. Okay, nice. Anyone besides Tony Hawk? Brian Sheckler. Okay, Sheckler. Anyone else? Okay, the reason, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Rod Beardick. Rod Beardick, very nice, very nice. Uh, the reason I asked that is it just set us up to say this is one of the best female skateboarders in the entire world, and I wanted to see how many of you actually knew any female skateboarders, right? And is that because of the fact that who we see on TV is the males who are sort of in charge of the game or the ones who, um, that everyone looks up to? So that fits really well with what is going on today as we're a women's place, and in particular, where's the LGBT, commu LGBT community um, in this space as well. Our guest Vanessa is here. I just want to give a, a, a round of applause to her. I was just asking them if they could name any um, pro skaters, and Rob Derrick was in there, Tony Hawk, Sheckler, and then I asked if they could name any females. So now they'll all be able to name female after this. Great. All right, guys. So obviously, I'm going to be presenting Vanessa Torres. Uh, just a brief intro. Uh, when she was 21, a local newspaper described her as the table flipping, golf cart stealing, trash talking, contest winning kind of outlaw who can board slide in the knob welded rail. <laughs> So she was born in Anaheim, California, and started skating when she was 13 years old with a ton of friends. Um, she ended up moving to Modesto, California, a little bit up north. Um, but as her friends started to stop skateboarding, she decided to keep going with it. And at 17 years old, uh, she decided to drop out of high school, move back down south to Southern California, and pursue skateboarding as a career. Um, and as many of us who have skated before, her first skateboard was a World Industries board with a water boy character on it. Um, competition wise, Vanessa has been incredibly successful. In 2003, when she was 17 years old, she, won the first, she was the first female skateboarder to win a gold medal at the X Games Park event. And then the following year, she took silver at the X Games Street event. In 2015, she took bronze at the X Games Street event. And 2015, she also took second place at the first Street League Skateboarding Super Crown event. She's placed top five in the X Games six out of the last 11 appearances. Um, in 2002, she was part of a video called AKA Girl Skater, which is a documentary on four female skaters on a skateboarding tour in Australia. Um, this was the first major skate film to focus solely on the progression and culture of women in skateboarding by highlighting the top female skateboarders in the world. Director Mike Hill stated, given the current standard of women skating, a film that finally gives a voice to this subculture and the phenomenal athletes that represent it is well overdue. Now, for sponsorship-wise, Vanessa has been sponsored by a variety of big-name sponsors, including both Element and Globe. But after the uh, contract with Element ended, she decided to take a break from major sponsored skateboarding um, because she felt that she, that she wasn't represented by these big companies as well as she should be. Which brings us now to Meow Skateboarding, um, which was started by Lisa Whitaker. She launched the company in 2012 with the intention to introduce a space for women in the skateboarding industry while making an also fun and engaging brand. It started out as uh, 
as a team of only six, one of the only six women teams in the world. Um, it currently consists of 11 skaters and is one of the only brands in the world currently that has an only female skate team. Um, it's dedicated to help up and coming girls find recognition and exposure in the skateboarding community, but also um, for up and coming males as well. Great, in the community, Vanessa has been one of the most influential skateboarders for women as well as in the LGBT community. At the first Street Gate Skateboarding Super Crown event last year, Vanessa decided to wear a gay rights shirt to promote awareness of the LGBT community in skateboarding. She also has promoted the idea to separate female skateboarding culture from the currently dominated, dominant male skateboarding culture. And so with that, this is Vanessa Torres. Thank you. Uh, Vanessa, I just want to, there were a few things in there, like the first first slide talking about sort of uh, the raucousness of skateboarding culture and 21 year old, you know, cart, golf cart tearing the world apart. Um, just as a quick, th a quick thought for the class here is how many other sports or athletes would be talked about in that manner? Right? Like how do we, how do we describe, so one of the first things we're looking at women, women LGBT communities skateboarding doesn't even get to that level right so we should we should we should really acknowledge that for a second is there's so much that's involved with sort of the anti-establishment that that's what gets thrown on all our athletes to begin with um, as we were sitting in the back one of the discussions was we don't call ourselves athletes and that's like actually new terminology that we've that we've sort of um, taken on um, so I just wanted to be a little bit cognizant about that and uh, about that 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 space um, so let's just go to what drew you to skateboarding in the first place. Um, I always ran around with with these specific neighborhood boys, and I mean they were some of my best friends growing up. And I feel like we were always getting into something. It was you know I think before skating there was I'm sure I roller skated. I'm sure I you know I BMX and all of these things. And um, I think skateboarding can kind of, had kind of like you know, presented itself, and um, you know that's what I I, I I was a follower, and I followed, and uh, um, but there was this instant attraction to skating, and um, for the, the majority of the boys that I did hang out with, that um, was merely a phase, and for me, it was like I had found my calling, and. Um, with no, I you know, idea of where it could take me, but very much like living in the moment of what it did for me at, in my adolescence and being young. So um, it was very important to me then as it is now. Was there ever a time when you were involved in traditional sports? Um, when I was still in school. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I, I love sports till this day too. I mean, I played soccer. Um, I really just applied myself to everything in school, especially based or, you know, revolved around physical education and, um, you know, I ran track, um, was very, was very great in that, and, um, you yeah, know, basketball, just any, any sports, anything that I could really get into, um, but obviously skateboarding when I would get home, and, um, so I just was constantly feeding off of being, phys you know, just physically active, and, um, because it always just brought, um, peace in my mind, so I was always active. Well, that's amazing, because there's not a lot of, <coughs> That narrative of actually participating in other sports is something that sort of doesn't is kind of uncommon in skate. So it's really great that you had the opportunity to participate in other things, but you chose skateboarding, and that's something that doesn't um, that isn't for, that doesn't happen to everyone. Um, so also, I wanted to get into that discussion of the athlete. When was the first time you started thinking of yourself in those terms of being an athlete? Uh, I, I don't. I still don't. Um, it's it's merely a term that's used to categorize um, skateboarders, I suppose. I feel like when people actually, who aren't as educated in what we do, I think automatically assume um, that we're, we're just these rebels and um, out we are outcasts in, in a sense, I feel. But skateboarding is now in, a, in such an incredible place where so many people are trying to come in and attach themselves to it um, because it has become so popular. Um, but yeah, I don't, I mean, I do consider myself an athlete. I just, I mean, as a whole is like who I am, just an active person. And with skateboarding, um, I've never treated it as 
as this athletic sport, a sport. I've never treated it as a sport. I don't visualize it as a sport. Um, I feel like it's a freedom of expression and um, in its own way, an art. And um, so, yeah, the whole athletic um, <laughs> attachment to it, you know, it's, it's, it's merely for mainstream, I think, and um, in order to categorize, um, categorize it or put it somewhere, right. um, <clears throat> and especially, you know, Olympics and Olympic athlete and, and all of that. So, I mean, for, uh, for me personally, um, you know, that's kind of just like the outside, that's the surrounding of what we do. And, um, yeah, I think of it as an art form and uh, self-expression and just, you know, being true to yourself and, um, so no, that, that's fantastic. You touched on two important things that um, they were discussing earlier. It was like having the ability to have that expression and then also on the Olympics and what's missing from the, the IOC and what's missing from this. How many of you by a show of hands know that skateboarding is going to be in the Olympics in 2020? Okay, so a decent amount of people. So uh, you're looking at Olympic athlete now because that's what's happening potential. to the world. Yeah, potential. <laughs> I'm currently injured, yeah. but that's four years from now. So, right, yeah. a little time to recover. Yeah. But that's sort of the new framing, and the reason that the IOC is interested in it is because these are the new sports. These are the things that kids are, have now picked up, um, as as many of you raise your hands and show that you're in, that you've skateboarded before. So one of the things that we're looking at in skateboarding is even before the discussion that we've had of the LGBTQ community is just women in action sports and women in skate because they're so underrepresented. Unlike here where we have college campuses where we have Title IX and that representation between men and women is guaranteed, we don't have that in skateboarding at all. So it's basically just like it'd be this collective in the room, whatever we feel like doing is what, what happens. So now that the Olympic stage has been set, um, I just wanted to ask you a question, like, how does that impact both women and how do you see it impacting the LGBTQ community? As far as just um, the having, just Yeah, and having a little bit more representation, because um, it's a fight in skateboarding right now to have women in that space. Uh, I mean, I personally feel just the whole, you know, 2020 Olympics and everything is going to bring so much more recognition to what we do. Mm -hmm. Um, and who we are as people, and um, I mean that's that's obviously something that means a lot to me. Um, I mean it's not going to change how I live my life, but um, I think it's going to you know, bring awareness and shine a lot more light on very much needed areas of of our you know community and our industry, and that we're very much a part of. And um, I mean it's. I, these are things like I just don't think about, you know what I mean? I don't know why, I just, you know, I just, it's just yeah, I just, it's so complex and um, I think it's going to be very amazing for, for just women in general, um, getting the recognition that they deserve and um, I mean it's taken a really long time and I still, you know, think that there's a lot to, to change and you know what I mean in the future and um, I'm yeah I'm excited for all all women that are going to be involved in, in the Olympics and um, to be able to showcase like their talent and that you know we work really hard and um, yeah. okay. now also um, one of the things that have been brought up in one of the other um, academics was sort of that, that commodifying and that commercialization of, of identity. I wanted to see, what did you think about seeing the, the, uh, the Nike uh, be true or stay true and, and this ability for manufacturers to sort of grab identity and use that as a way to sell, sell diversity. Like, did you have any feelings when you saw that, saw that up on the screen? Yeah, it's just very disappointing, honestly, because I feel like, you know, our authenticity and like who we are is actually just being, is being marketed. And um, uh, it's funny because I was telling Naftali too, I was like, I haven't even thought about this. Like, and then just listening to everyone speaking on that subject, I was like, wow, it's, I mean, I feel these people, I mean, they don't really actually know like how, how we live and um, the struggle that we faced and, um, the industries that we're in, um, being who we are, and trying to live an authentic life, um, but is often suppressed um, in order to please the bigger 
bigger audience, I suppose. And um, I, I try to think about the actual activists inside the LGBTQ community that are that are trying so hard and, and striving to make a difference and, and bring change um, to a, a broader, a bigger audience and how much struggle there is in that, you know, just to, to make it happen. And then these huge, huge corporate companies come in and they're like, I mean, of course, it's so easy for them to come in with all their money and, but with no actual insight or emotion or it's just very easy to be like, oh, well, this is popular now. I'm going to come in and I'm going to take this and I'm just, I'm just going to, you know, <coughs> bank on it. And with little to no uh, regard for who it affects. And um, yeah, so actually, I mean, I, I can feel myself just I mean, being upset, you know, getting upset just thinking about it because it's actually not something that I have really put that much thought into until I entered the class and was listening. And, um, you know, um, where I'm at in, in my career, I'm very um, choosy, I guess, as far as what companies I represent. And um, one of the companies that I do skate for, they're based out of Sweden, it's Cheapo brand, and they are sunglasses and watches made affordable to, you know, just um, made for everywhere, made for everyone. And they're very um, anti homophobic, anti, um, you know, just anything that has to do with negativity towards women. And um, I can stand behind that brand because it represents. A huge part of my life and who I am, and I want to. I would want to represent someone like that, or a brand like that that is using their, you know, their following or what have you, as a positive way to impact the world. And which is probably why I have such few sponsors and others like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yet no. Like it's just I. I'd rather be a part of things good. that are small and be a part of the growth and and the impact and um, yeah, it, it definitely got my brain going for sure. So that's where I'll have you guys. Yeah. Too. Um, also, I want to talk. So you're saying being involved with the smaller companies now and making a decision. One of the things I want them to understand is how old were you when turn when you turned pro? Around 16, 16, 17. Yeah. So now you're a professional athlete. You, with skateboarding, that means you have your own professional skateboard model. Can we talk a little bit about what they made your model and how much how much uh, agency you had in developing your your identity out there? I feel with I mean I feel with that brand. Which know. we'll say is she wrote for Element Skateboard, which is one of the largest skateboarding companies mm -hmm. in the world. So you're 16 um, and you're on Element. Go ahead. Uh, I, I feel as though the way that they actually ran their, their marketing and their product, you know, development and all that, I don't even really think that they discussed a whole lot even with female and male counterparts, you know, it was just like, oh, well, we have this, this series and we're going to push this series out and put your name on it. And uh, so my first, my first graphic wasn't, I mean, I think it was like a landscape and it just said my name, Vanessa, yeah. mm -hmm. and um, which, I mean, I loved it because I was 16 and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, um, that skateboarding had taken me this far, and but I was only 16, you know. So, um, I do remember having a lot of issues with their apparel because I was also in a contract not only for hard goods but also, you know, apparel, soft goods, and um, they were, I mean, Breach of contract. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, because it was just not, I did not like the, how they fit, and um. So there was always like. Was that more because the design was still sort of male centric? Yes. With the with the. Because I was actually the only female on an all male team, and um, which I'm assuming they were just they were trying it out, you know. <laughs> and um, but, you know, as a kid, that was, it was. I mean, living the dream almost, you know, that I didn't even know was going to be my future, and. So I think most of my issues uh, like lied on the whole apparel and coming in and bringing in my, which I had um, modified like my own, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like altered Cut my own pants, pants and, and you way. know, I'm very into thrifting and I love vintage shirts. And so I brought in all these, you know, uh, potential ideas, um, even if they did a small run of them, at least I could be, you know, yeah, yeah and, and not reaching them. my contract, and, um, 
So that was always the issue, and I felt that I was never a priority as far as that, um, being a female. Um, and <laughs> Do you think that had to do with you being a female and your age at the time, or do you think like a combination yeah, of Yeah, and I also think that they had, they probably had no idea what they were really getting into. They were just like, okay, well, here's this girl, um, and there's, there, at the time, it was myself and maybe like five other girls, I don't even yeah. know, you know, and... And all of skateboarding. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and at least that I knew of at the time, and so there was... There wasn't really any like content for them to take. They were just like, okay, trial and error. Like we're gonna bring this girl on um, because she's winning all these contests and obviously foresaw like potential marketing. Yeah, right. exactly. And um, but it's a lot of like smoke being, you know, yeah. going up my ass and. It just never, I would bring in these, you know, these clothes and I'd be like, well, you know, here's how we can better our relationship, working relationship, and um, it just never saw the light of day. Yeah. Now, um, but they did start uh, Element Eden, and I, I know thinking. that I was the backbone to that. Yeah. And so, Which the, one of their largest product categories yeah. is female or women's apparel. So, I mean, after the But it's not based around skating. Right, which is the other issue is it's clothing yeah. just for beach wear and lounge wear and lifestyle casual wear, but not actually surrounded on the table. Right. Mm -hmm. Completely, yeah, separated. Right. Um, then also I just wanted to touch base on, you know, in skate we claim to sort of have this freedom of expression in the culture, um, but it is still made up of regular, right now regular men, <laughs> regular guys that are running these spaces. Do you see the answer being more of, what you're doing with Meow and having a company that's ran by women um, and for everyone versus the way that it's going now, do you think that that's the, the direction? Should we have more female-sponsored contests, things like that? <laughs> um, I, I feel like it's just, it's just like so complex, that, yeah. whole, that whole mess. But um, Meow is important to me because, it, I mean, it just, it made complete sense to get on board with these women that um, I have, I've been skateboarding for 17, 17 years or so, and considering how every, the chain of events and how things have gone, and there's really, I mean, how slow the progress has been, um, which almost feels like non-existent sometimes. Yeah. Um, with Meow, it, it was merely to just to start a company, to build a found, or it give, women or young girls a platform um, not based on you know your your sex your gen I mean just a place to come a community uh, I would think of a safe, a safe, safe space. space yeah safe space and, um, and so I, I was so adamant about becoming part of meow and once again another company starting from the ground and um, and I was like, yes, I want to be involved in this. I support this. Um, I've known Lisa since I was 13, like 14. So it just, it made sense. Like all of it made sense. It was like a no brainer. And um, it's it's just, it's funny because I was at, the, I, I mean, I was at this con exposure contest. Yeah. Which is the largest all female. Um, with um, all categories. Yeah. Uh, Bert, half pipe, bowl, huge bowl. Um, and that was just this past weekend. Yeah, and then a street course. Um, huge, huge event. I mean, uh, every year. I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's it's, it's incredible to see how many women um, and young girls coming out and just being themselves, and you know, just it, it's it's super rad to watch. And but it was funny because I I obviously I'm injured and I couldn't skate, which is already hard enough. Right. But I'm I'm watching I'm watching the, these judges, all all male judges. And, and yes, I know them all. Yeah. And I'm just looking up and I'm like, are they even, do they care? I'm just like, I know they're getting paid to be here, but there was, it just, it, there's no, I don't, heart in it. Yeah. And I'm like, all I could think was, I mean, I yelled at a couple of them Good. from like afar. And I was, like, I was like, did you see that happen? And it was just a, it was it was it was a mess, and I think the judging was unfair, and um, and being an outsider and also a skateboarder, I am able to see that, and so I was pissed. I was I was upset about it. I was just like you know, 
it's it's it feels as though we're moving forward, but then there's situations like that where it's it, it's like we just started, and um, it could be. Yeah, yeah, and it could just be really disappointing at times because especially, you know, I'm not going to name names, but, you know, some of these guys involved are really, are, are, are backers of female skateboarding, you know what I mean? And I'm like, well, you're just, you're doing a poor job of, of sticking by that by showing no, just, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no we, we discussed that in our, in, our, in our class earlier was that um, there's no, Females who are judging the contest. I should so, have been judging. Right, you should have been judging. Alyssa Steamer should have been. But my time is also person. valuable, and that's another thing that's I've gotten to a point in my career where people who know skateboarding and know women in skateboarding know who I am, and. Um, and there has to be value. Well, yeah, and I want to continue to do what I love, and and um, clearly, you can have a career in skateboarding. And now I'm at the point where I don't need more exposure. Right. I my time my time is valuable and my intel, my everything, you know what I mean, my existence in this community and this industry. But anyways, yeah, I was just like I should have been judging. I'm one of the judges, you know. Like I'm able to take like myself out and, and judge fairly. Like I know these women, I know their trick selection, I know exactly where they're gonna skate. Like I do you know what I mean? Yeah, like so yeah, that's it. I just feel like a lot, a lot of was, people, was just not seen, and that was that was really um, upsetting. So. And there's plenty of men who are making money in that space, like being, oh, actually yeah. the men. Yeah, they got paid for the so event. They're so. just oh, yeah, like yeah. the whole. There's the patriarchy. You know, know you see Nike banking off of. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh, we we'll, we'll just show face, and that's it. It's I just not only have to do a little bit more work than that, but. Um, I know we're that time, so. Uh, I, if you want to stick around, if you have questions afterwards, totally fine. You've got a few minutes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right.